we can treat back pain using our hands because we get this extra training. I love that osteopathic medicine focuses on the body's innate ability to heal itself. So that we need to focus on the root cause of the illness and focus on all these different factors of a person. A person isn't just their abdominal pain or their headache. It's talking about treating the root of the disease and finding the root illness. Hi, my name's Rachel and I'm a second year medical student in the US. I make videos about balance, my life in medical school, and also about military medicine. And today I'm going to be doing a video on why I chose DO, um, why I'm so excited to be an osteopathic physician, and why I'm so glad that I chose DO. So I'm going to talk about the four tenets of osteopathic medicine, kind of what osteopathic medicine stands for, and why it aligns with me best. And I'm also going to be just barely scratching the surface on the difference between DO and MD. This video is not all-encompassing, although I am going to talk about kind of like how they're similar and a little bit different. But essentially, if you are a DO or an MD, you are a licensed practiced practicing physician in the US and you can diagnose, treat symptoms and treat patients and do the same things essentially. You just have different titles after your name. So let's get into it. So I thought that I would start off with bare bone definition kind of of each um, DO and MD allopathic versus osteopathic medicine. So if you are going to be a DO and have the letters DO after your name, then you are going to be an osteopathic physician. And osteopathic, physici osteopathic physicians can practice in any specialty that they want to, although our education and training is slightly more centered around primary care, and I will touch on that. So it seems compared to... Um, MDs that osteopathic physicians go into more primary care roles um, and then if you are an allopathic physician or you go to an allopathic medical school then you are going to have MD after your name and essentially um, when I worked as a scribe in the emergency department I worked with both MDs and DOs they were both emergency med medicine physicians and um, they both had the same exact role um, it just was whether or not I was going to be with an MD or a DO that day and they were the physician that I followed and they treated the patients so I'm going to just give some quick bare bones definitions and I'm going to tell you the websites um, that I'm reading these off of and then I'm going to link them below just so you can check. Um, so I'm on the NIH National Cancer Institute, cancer.gov slash a long line. And for allopathic medicine, it says a system in which medical doctors and other healthcare professionals, such as nurses, pharmacists, and therapists, therapists treat symptoms and diseases using drugs, radiation, or surgery. And now I'm going to check the American Osteopathic Association's website. And it says, what is osteopathic medicine? A distinct branch of medicine in the US, osteopathic medicine emphasizes the interrelated unity of all systems in the body, each working with the other to heal in times of illness. DOs are fully licensed physicians who practice their unique whole person approach in every medical specialty. DOs look beyond your symptoms to understand how lifestyle and environmental factors impact your well-being and complete extensive postgraduate and clinical training before becoming fully licensed physicians. So basically MDs and DOs are the same. We just get a little bit slightly different training and emphasis when it comes to our medical school education. And what I mean by that is we take the exact same classes. We have the same licensing exams, essentially, except if you're a DO, it's going to be called Comlex. And if you're an MD, it's going to be called USMLE, although DOs can take the USMLE and many do when they're applying for residency so they can have the USMLE next to their MD counterparts. And it's kind of an easy way to compare um, because it is a different like metric system for DOs on the Comlex compared to um, the USMLE, the scoring system. So for DOs, the differences in our training, that's kind of what I was referencing is that while we are doing our um, our preclinical training, and I'm assuming this is going to happen in the clinical years, we do get extra emphasis on the whole lifestyle aspect of a patient and treating their whole, treating them as a person. That is a thing like in my lectures throughout medical school and even in my physical diagnosis class, um, you know, considering the patient and looking at them as a whole, not just saying like they have abdominal pain, um, you know, it would be more like what is going on in their life? Do they have any psychological things happening? Um, are they very anxious, stressed out? Have they been eating things that might be causing them to have abdominal pain? Um, is there anything else going on um, with like other organs around the area? You know, and the emphasis with osteopathic medicine and what DO medical schools like to say is that there is a more holistic approach to medicine. And I will say that I believe there is based on my training, but I've obviously only gone to an osteopathic medical school, but I do think my medical school does a good job in kind of integrating that and having us focus on the full person aspect and all the parts of them and not just viewing them as a symptom, but 
I do think that all physicians should be looking at patients as a whole, whether or not they're an MD or a DO, you know, you don't just look at one person and say, well, you have chest pain. Okay. I'm just going to like treat the chest pain. You know, you should be obviously treating the chest pain, especially if it's emergent, but then finding out why the chest pain is happening. If there's extra anxiety, if there's like, obviously if it's a lifestyle thing, not getting exercise and all of those things and really focusing on that. And another part about osteopathic medicine is it's all about prevention too. So prevention and lifestyle and those things play a huge role, which is why I really love, um, why that's really emphasized. And, you know, as I said earlier, all physicians should be emphasizing exercise and a good diet. And I'm not saying that MD, my MD counterparts and practicing MDs do not do that because they do and they should. Um, all physicians should do that, but we do get extra emphasis and extra, you know, training with this um, to make sure that we're saying this to patients. So I did want to touch on a few points. So why am I so glad that I chose DO and that I chose this path? Well, I truly believe and want to support um, the body and I have so much respect for it in the way that it has all these mechanisms and things that it does to heal us. And I really want to just support that and help my patients do that and do the same thing. I also really believe that food and um, exercise are medicine and I really want to preach that to my patients. Um, I just love the preventative aspect and how that can just, you know, preaching preventative medicine and having preventative counseling and really um, doing that myself so my patients can see that I'm doing that and then hopefully that inspires them to do that, you know, um, eat healthy and move their body and try to increase their cardiovascular health by maybe just even walking for 20 minutes a day. I think that's amazing. And um, I think that it could save patients so much money if we really stress that um, instead of them potentially developing diabetes and then having to pay for insulin and having to pay for medication, go in for doctor's appointments, have to see extra doctors. I really think that's so important and I wanna do that and I want to continue to take care of myself and my health, um, despite the fact that it is very hard <laughs> in medical school sometimes. Um, another reason that I'm so glad that I chose GEO is because Although Western medicine is amazing and there are medications that are actually like life-saving that can like decrease heart rate in a time of like cardiac arrest and like so many different ways that Western medicine is amazing. Um, you know, it can't heal everything. And I love that osteopathic medicine focuses on the body's innate ability to heal itself. And as I already said, like the body has so many amazing things that it does to heal itself. So the fact that we're really focusing on that and just taking advantage of the tools that we already have, you know, I have so much respect for my body after learning about all the amazing things like extra in medical school than like I already knew about, like all the biochemical processes and just like the anatomy and physiology is like actually crazy, the evolution of our bodies. It's just like, so we can thrive and do well and survive. It's incredible. Um, and I just really like the extra behavioral, social, psychological, spiritual, and religious aspects of a person's life that is embodied into osteopathic medicine. And it's a consideration that like we need to, it's something we need to take into consideration as we are osteopathic physicians, as I'm learning this and, you know, it plays into patients healing. So I'm, it's such a huge part of it. You know, if they have a support system, if they have religion to fall back on, if they have something they can believe in, something that can get them through their illness or sickness, that really will affect their mind and if their mind is right and they have a good mindset and they think they can get through this and they can do it and they have that family support system or just like spiritual or religious support system in their heads then there is going to be different outcomes for patients if they don't have that unfortunately because if they don't then it is going to affect their mind body and spirit and it could affect their disease outcome and um, their prognosis potentially so I just love those different parts of osteopathic medicine and like obviously I'm in medical school and I'm trying my best to stay balanced in medical school my health is very important to me and while it is hard sometimes and I do definitely have a sweet tooth and I definitely practice balance in the sense where like there are some days I don't go to the gym and some days where I just feel really lazy or like eat more than I should or have too much candy or too much sugar that's fine if I'm not doing that every single day and I do really want to respect my body and move my body and I know that ex the benefits of exercise it helps me so much with studying. It's a great break for me. It's a way for me to turn off my mind and then get back into it and feel energized and feel those endorphins and like the natural amazing things that exercise does for your body and mind. Um, so I just think 
you know, it really aligns with myself and my principles and my YouTube channel, obviously. That's what my YouTube channel is about. And I really am trying my best to practice this balance and to embody the osteopathic principles and tenets in my life every day. And obviously, um, OMT, which is Osteopathic Manipulative Treatment or OMM, Osteopathic Manipulative Medicine, it's called. That's like our extra lab that we get, extra hands-on training. There's five classes for it, OPP one through five. It's also called OPP which or osteopathic principles and practice um opp omm omt like basically same thing except omt is like the actual like treatment opp we say like opp class anyway obviously we get extra training in opp which is um i'm going to explain later um right after this what that is and what that does exactly but that's just another benefit to going to do school it's just another thing that i have in my bag in my toolbox that i can use for patients and it's extremely non-invasive and um obviously it's not pills so it's not like it's something that i need to get approved by insurance so i think that's amazing that it's a cheaper safer like potentially obviously it depends on the patient and if they have anything going on but it's just another way that we can treat the human body and take advantage of what the human body already does by using our hands and using omt so now i'm going to explain a little bit about omt right now and one thing that's a huge thing that i haven't even brought up is osteopathic manipulative treatment so this is when we learn about um we use our no our knowledge of anatomy and then we use our knowledge of the bones and the system and the muscular skeletal system and the biomechanics of that to use our hands to treat patients and treat somatic dysfunctions in patients um, without being extremely invasive. You know, we can treat back pain, which is literally like one of the number one reasons why people go to the doctor and millions of people suffer from back pain every year. And obviously it causes a lot of problems like dependence on drugs and things like that. And it really affects people's quality of life. So we can treat back pain using our hands because we get this extra training and Osteopath, osteopathic manipulative medicine and if you watched my last vlog um when i it was the one that said i had four exams in five days i was preparing for my opp4 practical and written exam and so we take um the complex as i said and the reason why the complex is different from the usmle is because the complex has extra quest questions on this osteopathic manipulative medicine and the treatments and how the body works and all of that so there's three different our basically three different parts of your back, the cervical part, the thoracic part, and the lumbar part. So we basically learn how to treat somatic dysfunctions from all of them. For example, if I was going to diagnose um, the thoracic a somatic dysfunction in the thoracic vertebra. Um, so the vertebra are just the different little <laughs> parts of your spine, basically. I'm not trying to get too intense with um, all of the medical lingo. Then I would basically um, put my fingers on the transverse processes, see which one is more posterior, um, say that the right transverse process is more posterior. That means that your, um, and say we're at T3 and it's in aligned with the spinous process, the transverse processes, um, and the right one is more posterior. That means that your T3 could potentially be rotated right and side bent left um, and that would be if it's a neutral type 1 dysfunction <laughs> um, I'm not gonna get too into it and then I would I could use a potential muscle energy counter strain or HVLA technique to treat your back um, so there's so many things that OMT can do um, you can take advantage of the lymphatic system which is basically the system in your body to like get all of the gunk out of your body and it goes to your thoracic duct and the right lymphatic duct and that's kind of how you like flush things out and flush the toxins. You know, it's kind of been trending on TikTok to like do things like this and really get the lymph out of your face and get that extra inflammation out of your face. Um, so we kind of learn techniques like the lymphatic effleurage technique. And there's just so many things that we learn. Um, with OMT, we also learn about the sympathetics and parasympathetics. So basically um, you may have heard like your flight or fight, your flight or fight system. So your sympathetics are your fight or flight system and this is like when your heart rate is going to go up and you're anxious and you have to like be on and focusing on what's happening because you're in danger versus your parasympathetics is your rest and digest system so the in omt we learn about how to inhibit and stimulate the sympathetics and the parasympathetics for different things and it's very interesting and honestly most disease processes come from an increase in the sympathetic system and that would make sense because usually when something's happening like if you're having a heart attack or there is a disease process there is inflammation in your body your body is kind of like going and it's working hard to 
get this, um, to fight this disease process or to alert you about what's going on in your body if you're having a heart attack because it's going to increase your heart rate. It's going to, you know, make you, um, make your eyes dilate so you can see exactly what's in front of you. It's gonna prevent you from going to the bathroom so you're not gonna pee. You're gonna be filling up your bladder, but you're not gonna pee. You're gonna pee when you're relaxed, you know? It all kind of makes sense when you think about it. So um, with your sympathetics, it's gonna decrease your motility, decrease the secretions. That's why you would get dry mouth. Um, it's gonna vasoconstrict your arteries. So that means that it's gonna be able to, your body is able to pump blood faster to your central part, to your heart and lungs and what it really needs and then less to the extremities and then also constrict your sphincters. So if you have too much um, sympathetics going on, you could have constipation, inflammatory bowel disease, IBS. So you would treat these symptoms by increasing the parasympathetic, so increasing rest and digest to um, really it, like be able to go to the bathroom basically. And then um, you would decrease the sympathetic. So you could do this by doing mesenteric lifts or an abdominal pump or you could also do sacral rocking to stimulate pans for less than 30 seconds. So I, that probably doesn't make sense to anyone, but those are just some things that you can do with OMT. So there are actually four tenets of osteopathic medicine. So basically four things that kind of like define osteopathic me medicine or help um, describe it. And so number one, the body is a unit. The person is a unit of body, mind, and spirit. Number two, the body is capable of self-regulation, self-healing, and health maintenance. Number three, structure and function are reciprocally interrelated. Number four, rational treatment is based upon an understanding of the basic principles of body unity, self-regulation, and the interrelationship of structure and function. So basically, osteopathic medicine is really focused around um, the function of the body and making the body work to its optimal way that it can because our body has so many amazing mechanisms and ways to take care of ourselves and alert us if something's wrong, um, you know, fight disease and let us know if something's going on so we can help fight disease and take something to help it or do something to help it. So I really love how that's really ingrained in the osteopathic tenants. And I just love how the body, mind, and spirit is really interrelated because I just think like mental health is such a, like so closely tight knit with physical health, it directly um, affects it. It's just like a direct relationship. And also the spiritual element of like your spirituality and you don't have to be spiritual or anything, but everyone is spiritual to some degree, whether they're religious, um, if they believe in this, X, Y, Z, you know? So I really love how that's also a consideration here. I did start rambling a little bit in different parts of this video, but that's just honestly because I am really excited that I am going to be an osteopathic physician and I'm honestly so glad that I chose to be a DO um, because it just aligns with my principles. It's talking about treating the root of the disease and finding the root illness. And I know all of us have gone to the doctors and felt dismissed and felt like the doctor put just, just prescribed us a prescription and tried to get us out the door. And honestly, that is not the way patients should be treated, but we also need to consider the fact that it's not 100% the doctor's fault because they are probably overworked and they probably have to see four patients in an hour, which is absolutely insane to do a history and physical and full um, exam on someone and really get to know them and what the root of their illness is it is very hard to do and then do that charting and then go and see the next patient that's completely different so i do kind of understand that to a sense but we have to do our best as physicians to find the root cause of the illness and osteopathic medicine really does that we are reminded of that whenever we're learning about things and that is completely like continuously emphasized in our class that we need to focus on the root cause of the illness and focus on all these different factors of a person a person isn't just their abdominal pain or their head and honestly, there are amazing treatments using OMT for headaches and abdominal pain and basically everything. If you have not looked into um, DO school, if you're interested in going to medical school um, or osteopathic medical school um, versus allopathic medical school, then you really should look into it. And please let me know if you have any questions about osteopathic medicine. I'll do my best to answer them. And this is in no way hating and saying that DOs are better than MDs in no way saying that. I'm just saying I'm so glad with my decision because there is these slight little differences um, between them, but they're still both amazing practicing physicians that help help patients every day. And this was kind of just my little input on it. Um, so if you made it to the end of this video, I really appreciate you and thank you so much. And let, you, let me know if you have any questions and let me know if you are looking to see anything else on my YouTube channel. But thank you so much for watching and I hope that you have an amazing day.